Hello, everybody. I'm Arina. And I'm Arthur. And we are the CEO and product designer from Evil Martians, which means that we came all the way from planet Mars to our temporary homes at, in San Francisco. And Poland, Warsaw. And all in order to talk to you about color. What does color do to us all? Well, first of all, color draws attention. Um, and we use this feature of color to our advantage every single day. The yellow of this bus immediately tells everybody on the road that this is a very special vehicle, right? And the same goes uh, about green exit signs right here. Uh, red fire extinguishers, orange construction vests. This is what we know and use. But this is not all. Color is powerful. Color is uniquely positioned to affect us deeply and emotionally. And Mark Rothko definitely knew everything about this. But what about Digital color. Well, digital color is getting more and more powerful as well. Just think about it. The color that we've known and used for decades, this is your very familiar hex thread, is getting more powerful because today, we can use this thread in P3 space. Can you, who can spot the difference? Perfect. I'm sure everybody, everybody in this room can spot the difference. So does it mean that now that we have access to more vivid colors, does it mean that we use more color in digital world? Well. Not exactly. This is just one, one illustration of this trend. This is the color of physical objects from the Science Museum in the UK. But we see the dynamic is a little bit concerning. There is more and more gray and blue, but less, fewer of the other colors. In the last two decades, this trend is actually accelerating. We're getting more and more grace. And think about the web. Are we using more color or less? Just ask it yourself. So are we, are we seeing the loss of color? Um, let's think about the 90s. Let's think where it, it all started. Who's been building websites in the 90s? OK, not, not, not too many. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so this is the official WinZip website from 1996. <laughs> My question is, maybe we were burned by the use of color back then? And remember, we only had 256 safe colors back then, and yet, we used color, colored fonts. We used different, different shades, maybe a little bit recklessly, but m maybe a little bit dangerously, but al also definitely much more freely. So there is one place where we still use colored fonts today, a lot, every single day. What's this use case where we're using uh, colorful fonts? not just black, 90% gray, and stuff like that. This is our code. Look into the IDEs. Uh, engineers care, and we, we all care a lot about the colors, color themes in our code. So this actually makes me think, makes me believe that we want color, that we want to use the power of color. So what if 
We simply don't have a good enough tools to use the color efficiently, to program the color. And what if we'll give you these tools today, tonight, in the next 15 minutes? Arthur? Thank you, Rina. Okay, before we start, I want to show you one problem. I think everyone faced at least once. So, I want to ask you, I want to show you this problem and ask you, how would you approach this? So, let's say we have a brand color, in this case, blue. And we have a UI system that we need to apply this color to. Well, the first button is easy. We are just coloring it blue. But what with the others? You know, we should color it red and green. And you see, I want to get the exact same green as my blue and the exact same red as my blue. I want to get perceptual uniformity. I want to be them, I want to be, I want to have them cohesive, right? And so, what we can do with this, right? We can open the color picker. We have a hue slider just for that. Let's do this. Okay, something went wrong. <laughs> can you notice? The red is too dark compared to our blue, and the green is too bright. Moreover, it's not accessible. You cannot read the text on it, right? So, how can we achieve something like this, right? How can we make them cohesive? How can we get perceptual uniformity? I think I have an answer. And the name of this answer might not be really easy to pronounce. <laughs> it is called OKLCH. OKLCH, right? And today, I'm excited to walk you through all the benefits and all the uh, benefits of this color model and showcase the tools we've been developing for the past five years. Okay, let's do this one more time. So, how do we think about color? Make it lighter, increase saturation, or change the color. But here is what we have in our tools. Can you make it lighter? Can you increase saturation? Can you at least tell what color this is? Anybody? OK. It's orange. <laughs> and you see, OKLCH is really good here. OKLCH is not a new color model, but it's also a new way of describing this color. So let me explain what LCH means. L stands for lightness. If you increase it, you get more lighter orange, or by decreasing it, you're getting, well, darker or orange. And C stands for chroma. By increasing it, we're getting more saturated orange. And by decreasing it, we're getting less saturated orange. And H stands for hue. Well, it's basically a rainbow. And notice that while I'm changing the parameter here, other two, lightness and chroma, are not changing. They're locked. And they stay consistent. So, let me walk you through all the practical benefits of OKLCH and why do you need to use it? So, first one is the cohesive colors. This is the main benefit of OKLCH. You see, OKLCH colors, all the derivatives from OKLCH colors feels like one family, while using hacks results in inconsistent palette. Now we can have the exact same green as the blue and the exact same red as the blue. And this means we have really, really good color accessibility. 
So here, for example, we have a violet button. And I'm changing the hue parameter and getting this really good green button. It's accessible and feels like from the same family. While changing the hue in the hex results, well, in the low contrast. This means that you can enable themes in your product really easily. Colors are just predictable. Here in this demo, I'm changing the hue parameter, and everything stays accessible. Note how text on the left sidebar is readable. And dark theme is easier than ever. You just have to mirror lightness and keep chroma and hue the same. Here in our demo, you can see I'm changing the hue and everything stays readable and beautiful. Do you remember the format of OKOCH? Let me re remind you. Um, so here is what we can do with it. We can do basic math. OK, I'm going to show a little bit of code so you would understand better. Let's say we have our base color set to our brand blue color. And I want to have a hover color. And so instead of just manually picking this color, I can say, well, take my base brand color and increase lightness by 0 0.1. It's that easy. And if you will change the base color in your product, everything will change accordingly. Also, OKLCH supports more colors. So this figure here represents how many colors our eyes can see. And this small triangle is a sRGB color space. It's what our monitors, most of our monitors, are showing right now. But we have P3 color space, right, in our new smartphones and laptops. And P3 color space shows 50% more colors than sRGB. And OKLCH can supports it from the box. So this means your products will stand out against the competitors. Colors will pop. In fact, OKLCH future-proof. This means that it supports all the new technology, including REC 2020, which shows 76% more colors. So for example, VR screens would really benefit from it, making them more true to life than ever. And OKLCH is supported by all browsers, Chrome, Edge, Safari, Firefox. And it's also fully embraced by Tailwind. So you can start building today. And you can also use P3 and OKLCH in Figma. Just put OKLCH in Color Picker, and you can change your color profile to P3. And if you want to copy it back, you can open Dev Mode. So let's circle back to our problem. Do you remember it? Do you know how to fix this now? Yeah, we are going to use a color picker, but an OKLSage OK one. In this case, I'm using OK Color plugin. So what should we do? We should move our hue slider two times. So first time, we are moving it to left, and we are getting this beautiful green that is accessible and no longer blown out. And red is amazing also. It is no longer dark. And here is our result. Can you see the difference? Can you see that they are from the same family? They feel cohesive. And so states are also are made easily, right? So hover state and press state are just a matter of changing a lightness parameter in your code. Moreover, OKLCH is really good for cases where you need to have a lot of cohesive colored elements. For example, I've created this set of 36 tags just in a minute, and they all feel consistent. OK. We took everything we know 
and we've built tools that will accelerate your work and allow you to build your products both beautiful and accessible. The first one is OKOSH Color Picker. Please grab a phone and copy and scan the QR code. It will allow you to understand how OKOSH works better. You can change the parameters and see it for yourself. And second, the project starter. It allows you to choose the closest color to your brand color and generates variables for all your basic primitives, colors for text, borders, surfaces, buttons. Please check it out also. And finally, Harmonizer. This is a new one. It's an amazing tool for creating accessible and consistent color palettes for your user interfaces. I'm excited to see what you're going to build with it. Irina, back to you. So this is not all. This is the whole suite of tools, content, uh, that we mostly we created, um, and other people as well in the community, in the growing OKLCH ecosystem that we, all, we want you to use, to leverage, and also to contribute to. Um, all of these tools were created inside Evil Martians the agency for developer tools startups. This is what we do. This is our daily job. But I want to talk a little bit um, about the reasons we were able, I think, to come up with all those tools. And this was thanks to these two guys, Roman and Andre, designer and developer at Evil Martians. And obviously, they were super passionate of building better tooling and better processes and better products in the end. But there was also something else that I wanted you to share with all of you that I think was pretty unique. Uh, they disregarded the boundaries between their domains. The designer didn't just stay in Sigma. The designer worked in the code. And the developer didn't just kind of consume the designs. No, they worked together. And this is what I think we should all be doing. Overstep into different domains. It's important when we do so, we get support by our teammates. So I want to convince you to, if somebody who's not a professional in your field steps into your domain, support them, help them. And together, you will build better tools um, in, in the interception. So that's the trick. And with that, let me know if, if we were able to maybe convince you to try and use color more freely. And if we did, we want us all to share our ideas, um, our thoughts, examples of the use of color, more creative use of color, maybe from the past, maybe from something, maybe from the present. But let's share those examples in any social media with this tag, and we'll meet you there, and we'll, we'll share more there. And I hope we'll be programming the color and we'll be building more col colorful products from today on. Thank you.